bit like this. It's, it's, it's worth a lot of money. So it's not like it's like this and you have to carry in your bag and you get stopped by uh, customs and all that. So I don't know around customs here. I hope there's no <laughs> one from customs here. And uh, before we go uh, in detail there, yeah, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Okay, so uh, who does not have the book yet? Here. So yeah, uh, okay, so if you have not already joined the WhatsApp group, uh, please join the WhatsApp group. The link is here. bit.ly 2G5, 2G5GE0Z. O Z. Is this zero or O? Try O. Okay, so uh, if you go to this WhatsApp group, I'll be streaming a lot of stuff in the WhatsApp group, like my investment picks for this week. And we'll see how it's done, okay? Uh, again, what, what, I, uh, you know, what, what I am teaching now is a new way to invest. So I will show you that it works. Okay? I will show you that it works a way that is more suitable for normal people. Now, when you talk about traders, I think there's some very good traders. I don't deny that, but, but let's face a fact. How many of you can really be good traders? 5%. So this is not for the 5% who will be good traders, okay? You guys belong somewhere else. This is for the 95% who do not want all these uh, stresses uh, about trading and all. And this is what we're trying to show here. And we're going to show you with real data. And next week, uh, I will give you in the WhatsApp group, you will see the recommendations. You'll even see the recommendations that I made earlier this week. And then you can see where it went to. You know, you really don't need to understand the details. You just look at the charts, whether it did go up and down or, or, or whatever. So what we want to tell you is that there is indeed a, a better way of trading. When we talk about all about financial freedom, well, that's fine. But, uh, you know, uh, which is why when, when I did this, I think earlier this year, I, I wanted to focus on more on the people over 50. Not to say that this is a place that's not suitable for people under 50. In fact, it is very suitable for people under 50. Uh, because why did I target over 50? Because over 50, like me, you know, maybe you're old, you don't have the energy. Like me, you have many things to do. Uh, you really cannot afford to go and watch the trading screen every single time. And, uh, you know, you cannot afford the stress. Uh, I am from Sekolah Menengah Sains Kedah. And, uh, you know, we have a WhatsApp group and one of my friends had a heart attack on Thursday. So you guys that want to trade, especially the one, the retirees, uh, after they retire, oh, about 45, I want to trade this, I want to trade that. My issue is, are you guys crazy? Don't, don't exchange for just a little money your life. Uh, it's, it's not worth it, okay? So that's why I said I specialize in things for the people over 50 because I have to travel a lot, okay, uh, doing my consulting work. Now I wrote those two books. Uh, one is on Forex. Uh, the other one is on precious metal because I see in the next coming economic crisis, you will have to uh, go defensive into uh, precious metals like gold, silver, and the like. And we're going to look at some of those charts too. So uh, this is really a journey, uh, this is really a long journey in my group. I think I have four, total 400 people over two years, right? So it's quite, quite a big group. I teach uh, Forex, I teach cryptocurrencies, I teach commodities. Uh, yeah, I teach everything. <laughs> I've been a long-term uh, investor. So, so if you're scared, just dive down. Yeah, I get scared. Like, so that was me just diving down. Go close, okay? Driving down in on the goal post. Uh, that was after Tony Robbins. <laughs> so the idea was uh, uh, to say my vows here, right? But, but, but really, I want to do for people. Yeah, but it was very scary, you know. Uh, especially the first few moments when you think that you might die. <laughs> After like one minute, okay, you may not die at all when the parachute goes up. Everything is okay. Before the parachute goes up, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Even the parachute is up, it's just really, really cool. Look at that, look at that. 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 Look at
Again, my mission in life is to provide financial freedom to all of you. Yeah, so financial freedom is to provide financial freedom to people. Live it on the air, guys. Live it on the air. This is very hard. Do what you want. So uh, it's, just it's, change your dreams. Okay, don't it's, give it's up. Been a, and if you're afraid to die, it's been a really long journey. Okay. It's kind of been a really long home. journey. And uh, it took one year to really adjust this and make it something that's, that's really targeted for the 50s and to come out with this uh, methodology, okay? Yeah, so uh, just that. Oh, you have, you have to pull this back. Okay. Oh, can, 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 can. So, so just in the screen. No, you need. You, you bring this at the back. Uh, this is bring it at the back. Then, then you can see it bigger, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Just bring it at the back. Maybe. Yeah. See? Now it's bigger. It's always about the back. Okay. So uh, you can follow me on uh, take, 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 take this social media thing, okay? So, uh, yeah, that's my uh, YouTube channel, Supri Hamid FX. Uh, this is the link to that YouTube channel. That is my Facebook, uh, Supri Hamid. Yeah, that's me. Instagram, Supri Hamid FX. Uh, you can go to LinkedIn also. Yeah, Supri Hamid. Basically, that's my face. Did I change my face? Probably not. So, just follow me on social media. I, I intend to... Uh, <laughs> to, to, to uh, really update my status there on, on my journey, okay? On my journey as a consultant, as a trader, as a trainer and all that. So really being the jack of all trades and I hope that you too have an own, your own career or you too have a life is that when you have a life, uh, how do you trade when you have a life? Now, if you don't have a life, that's a different thing, okay? You don't have a life. Uh, we, uh, we kind of have a problem, you don't have a life. So I really hope you guys uh, do have a life there, yes. Uh, Nick, you show, yes. How are you? So, really, uh, who is I? Who is me? Uh, you know, Pakistan, yeah. I, li I like countries with a lot of population, and then Pakistan, Philippines, Bangladesh, and all that, uh, because I always feel that, you know, uh, countries with a lot of population have a bigger potential. In fact, uh, I'm focusing a lot of consulting activities there. Whereas the teaching activities is, is, is still in Malaysia. So I am now a blockchain consultant, as I said, for a company out in Pakistan. Uh, we are uh, going uh, to do an ICO because we're going to build a blockchain on uh, gemstones, okay? Gemstones, which is uh, mainly uh, emeralds and rubies. Uh, I'm a trainer in Forex, commodities, and cryptocurrencies, which you will see today. And uh, hopefully you can learn from me on, on how to trade. I'm an author. You see my two books just now. I wrote money on Forex. Uh, I've written on uh, precious metals. And now I'm writing another book with another co-author, Johan Hamid on cryptocurrency. Well overdue. Now, we didn't want to write on cryptocurrency before because cryptocurrency was going down. So we will have a lot of haters, which we didn't want to do, okay? So you cannot write a book and nobody wants to write ah, that the cryptocurrency is going down. Now that cryptocurrency is going up, yeah. then maybe we, we are going to write something on that. And also on how to invest in this new uh, environment where cryptocurrencies could go up again. And which is why when you talk about ICOs or IEO, initial exchange offering, we are now thinking or even launching a gemstone blockchain and, and doing an uh, ICO and IEO for that, okay? I'm an international speaker. I'll speak at Blockonomic uh, Excellence Award there on the 25th uh, April. Uh, the subject of my uh, panel is usually, uh, you know, how can the government play a role in, in, in boosting Industrial Revolution 4.0 in Malaysia? And I think that, that the role here for someone like us, you know, because I, I, we, go, we, we do go overseas, I will talk more in that context. Like when you're going overseas to a country like Pakistan, I think the role that the government plays is a lot. Okay, you just cannot go there and just walk in and expect things to happen. 
uh, this is where I think government intervention is very, very important. Like uh, going with uh, the prime minister's delegation uh, is very important. That's uh, let's say Qatar Airport. Uh, yeah, and I'm a trader, and I'm a trader, and that's the most important thing. That how do I, in all these things that I do, how do I trade? Because I cannot afford to uh, nay. I can't afford to look at the screen every day. Uh, I can't afford to be so stressed every day or every single time. And uh, you know, you know, traders, like you see Forex traders, they're a mysterious bunch. Uh, they, they hide somewhere. They look like crazy people. And then it's a very stressful thing. So I tend not to do that. So as you can see, my time frames are different from the traditional trader. And it's not even Forex because after you will see, I tend to trade every Thing, okay, I, 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 I do trade uh, everything and uh, I like to trade things that, 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 that make money, you know, I don't like to trade things that don't make money and it really doesn't matter to me whether it's Forex, cryptocurrencies or commodities or indices, does it really matter? What matters to me and you is that we make money. The second thing that matters to me and you is that uh, we are near, we, 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 uh, we stay healthy. Because again, I do have a group of people over 50, like the gentleman here. <laughs> we don't want him to be so stressed <laughs> that, you know, you come, you know, the things happen to my friend, he got a heart attack. Do you want that? You really do not want that, you know? So you, you want to take care of your health too. And, and there is a way to do it. And we're going to see it live next week. And I'll show you what we have accomplished so far this week. And I'll show you how it works, okay? But you're going to see it live next week where I have recommendations. And you just follow through the recommendations. No problem. Okay? And uh, yeah, so th this is really what we want to do here. Simple. I want to be simple. Okay? Take trades and uh, emotions are managed automatically. Uh, so this is something that is quite difficult to do because you treat any trading book, it's all about emotion, right? And that's what I wrote in the book also. But I'm saying here, in order to trade effectively, you have to remove emotions. So I'm saying that, how do you manage these emotions uh, automatically? Well, you see, after there's a statement from my students on how they did it, it's very easy because once you get into the emotional factor, you are going to make a mistake, okay? Not only you, I also make a mistake. And we do tend to get emotional uh, because, uh, you know, we, 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 we are human. Uh, and, and really, uh, and really when you talk about, about Forex and uh, this, I think you know now, right, that you are already set up to lose, especially in Forex. Not the others. I think the others are quite easier. But in Forex, you are pretty much set up to lose. And, uh, you know, your broker, because statistics are here, the statistics, especially for the retail traders, show that 90% of, uh, 90% of the retail traders are going to lose money. So the broker, you know, you have a broker on the other side, he doesn't have to do any counter trade to hedge, okay? He, as long as he uh, loses money, as long as you lose money, he will make money. And then that's how they want. And then you can see a lot of funny things going on in, in brokers. I mean, if you are a trader, uh, you know, everyone is going to teach you. And this is one example, right? Everyone is going to teach you of the importance of putting stop losses. And we have here in this group that, that I see his name here. There's a guy here that is the champion of stop loss. Yeah, Sharil bin Azmi is the champion of stop loss. You can, you can ask him. He always gets the stop loss, you know? The position goes for you, then goes against you, then you stop loss, then goes back up again. So you see something in the books, you have to protect your position. And yet, once you protect your position, you will always get stopped out. That's not good. If you don't protect your position, well, then you will have an even bigger problem because if you're so emotional, you let it run and un until it blows your account, which is never a good idea to do that. So. How do we protect ourselves? Uh, and the best way to do it, you know, as I ask you, uh, tell you afterwards, how do you remove that emotion there? And, and, and the other thing is, how do you remove the stop loss there? Safely, yeah? Don't just do it, huh? I'll tell you how to do it. And after I show you how a beginner did it, I do it differently, okay? I'm, I'm different because I've seen it before. You guys that haven't seen it before, 
have to have the discipline to do it like the new student that will show you how to did it. Okay, now once you have experience like me and you've seen the thing happen many, many, many times, then you can do it like me. A little bit more daring, lah, but again, as a principal, we, we really do not like uh, to run with stop losses, although stop losses are possible, okay? So, uh, yeah, I do teach kids, I do teach uh, old people, there's a bunch of them, it's part of life. So now let us start with uh, the meat and the crux of the matter. This is one of the videos that I'm going to cut and put in my YouTube channel. Okay, I think the problem now that we start, let's start with the problem of Malaysia, okay? Uh, but before that, uh, this is what, what time is it now? Okay, so let's start with Malaysia now. Okay, now this is the uh, track of, this is the chart of the Malay, of the US dollar versus the ringgit. So you can see the US dollar going down against the ringgit from 420. Let's try to go here. Yeah. Let's try to go back. No, we can't go back. This is not, uh, this is not, uh, apparently this is not this one. Let's try to go back in time here and Let's do a share here. I'm going to do with a share. Uh, one moment, you share and that. Oh, it is on there. Okay. okay. Oops. Hey, what are you doing to? No, that does not look right. Let me share it again. Okay, that was, that was just the wrong sharing on Zoom. Uh, this is a challenge we have in Zoom. Okay, so it's now 228. Uh, let me share this, this chart with you here. Uh, let's go back to Zoom and I am going to share PowerPoint. Okay, and uh, yes. And, uh, let's go here and check. So yeah, the, the, the champion of, of me. So, so let me let me put you the in here. I'm gonna give you the uh, this the uh, the, uh, yeah, go, go to this WhatsApp channel because I will be posting my recommendations for this week and also the billionaire mentors uh, basically advice for this week because he's supposed to advise me on more things, okay? And, and we'll introduce you to the billionaire mentor after it's okay. But before that, okay, uh, this is the chart of the ringgit versus the US dollar, rather the US dollar versus the ringgit. You can see here this spike. I think the spike is, is, is very, very dangerous because uh, it shows a break in trend, okay? So if you can see this, this is shows a break in trend. The ringgit was around what? Had gone from 420 all the way down to 406. And from 406 is now what? 412, 411, 412, went up to 413. Okay, now when you see something like this and a break in trend, you must ask the big picture, where is this going through? Okay, uh, is this going to go up? Is this the sign? Or, or is this just a normal fluctuation that will go up and down, up and down and come back? I don't think so. I think there is something else that is going on here. And I think that whatever is going on here is going to affect a lot of uh, people uh, in Malaysia. And uh, if you are Malaysian uh, or if you are old enough, then you can remember the two previous depreciations that had in 1996 or 1997, 1998, the ringgit went from 2.5 to 4.88 to the US dollar to before settling at 380. Okay, so 2.5 times 50% is like 380. Okay, now it was depreciation number one. So when something depreciates, guess what? You are poor. Okay, you're poorer. Now for the younger generation, you're poorer temporarily, but over time as people adjust to the, to the lower salary level or whatever, I think 
things kind of adjust and, and takes care of itself over the longer term. That's, that's really what I found out because I was very young during the 97-98 uh, crisis. I was not very young during the 2014 to 2016. There was another depreciation, if you remember. Ringgit went from 3 to 4.5. So I've lived to two depreciations. I can tell you that over the long term, it doesn't matter. That means tomorrow the ringgit goes to 50 to the US dollar. For the younger guys, it doesn't matter, which is I see two in this room. Lah. <laughs> For we older guys, it matters. <laughs> you know why? Because suddenly the savings we have, we cannot find the same thing. We cannot buy the same thing. It's just as simple as that, you know? Because now, say I have 1 million ETF, I can buy 1 million worth of goods in today's ringgit. If the ringgit goes to 8 to the US dollar, I can only buy 500,000, which is very cruel. Okay. So suddenly my savings have shrunk. This is not good. So again, you have to decide which side of the fence you are. Are you of the older generation or are you of the younger generation? Okay, And, and, and trust me, after having gone to Pakistan where the currency is anything, it's anything but stable you can still thrive in a, in, a, in a period of near, in a period of depreciated currency. It's actually okay. So, this is the prophecy from the billionaire mentor. Uh, the other parts of the prophecy, which are, I'll probably get it tomorrow. I'm meeting him tomorrow. I'm meeting him tomorrow with a, a very successful Bangladesh guy uh, who get this. He has an e-wallet with 3 million users. A lot of them are workers working in, in, in the Gulf states. So again, uh, you know, Pakistan, Bangladesh, same thing. Along there. <laughs> so we're building, we're building all this. Now this is the the near. So who is he? He was the advisor last time to a billionaire. You know who my boss was, right? I was working in the, in the Al Bukhari group. So you know who that is. So you know the rich people always have advisors, and they have good advisors. We can't afford. So the good thing, if you want to be rich, uh, if you want to go to find an advisor like this guy, he won't lie on you. He's like, who are you? <laughs> so you work for someone rich, and then you, you go and make friends with this advisor, okay? <laughs> and then you ask him, what do you do? Advise my boss now. Can, can I know or not? So he has been there to, to advisors. And, uh, you know, to his credit, a lot of advice has come true. For example, those of you that followed me in crypto or that are in my community in crypto uh, knew uh, how we, you know, we really made a lot of money in the crypto market because his advice that, uh, you know, that it was time to go in cryptocurrencies and we really hit it at the right time. Okay, you guys remember from October to January and then I think in February when Bitcoin was about 15,000, he uh, issued the call that Bitcoin would fall to 5,000. I know many did not believe, but it did. It did fall to 5,000. And I think when uh, Bitcoin was like 8,000, he then said, get out, get out of Bitcoin. You're going to go to 4,000. It did go down to 4,000. And it's now at like 5,000 again, but it did go below 4,000. And of course at 4,000, he said he wasn't sure. He said, this might be the bottom, which is around 3, 2004, or there might be another bottom. So he wasn't sure. So I think that the bottom has already happened at around 3,000. Okay, so now it's time to go up. And you guys know, or you guys came to my earlier session, knows that I'll ask for his target again on Bitcoin, uh, because he did say that Bitcoin, uh, in certain circumstances, could go back up to 15,000. Okay, I don't know. But either way, I see Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies recovering. Now, when you talk about currency, see, I'm talking about many assets, okay? So don't be confused, okay? I'm, I'm a jack of all trades. I trade everything that makes money. I think that's easier. So rather than talking about commodities, la, gold, la, uh, whatever, you know, forex, la, trade on, I can trade whatever I feel like trading as long as it makes money. So this is the prophecy that he gave. Uh, Brunei, Malaysia, and Indonesia will be screwed. I'll show you why. I'm going to show you a series of flags after. And you take a look at those flags, okay? You take a very, very careful look at those flags. 
And I want you to go back home and convince yourself that it won't happen. Because and if it, you cannot convince yourself that it won't happen, then you better follow my advice, which is to hedge yourself, protect yourself. Now, hedging does, you know, doesn't mean that tomorrow you go buy US dollar, but it means you do protect yourself to a certain extent. If the ringgit depreciates, then you are protected. You make money. If the ringgit doesn't depreciate, so what? And I think we have to think that way. You have nothing to lose. So, uh, Brunei, Malaysia, and Indonesia are screwed. It will start in Brunei. Their businesses will be screwed. Uh, I think you saw, right? There was a lot of calls last week for people to boycott Brunei because of their laws uh, against gays. So it's already started in Brunei. The danger with Brunei is that the currency is pegged to the Sing dollar. So if that is broken, it's going to be a big problem. And there may be a contagion. Well, there may be, there will be a contagion. <laughs> okay. And next will be Malaysia and Indonesia. Uh, Malaysia has been very lucky. Uh, if you guys don't realize it, uh, Indonesia's exchange rate is at the same exchange rate that it was in 1998 or 99, was it? During the height of the Asian financial crisis. The currency is even worse now. Uh, Malaysia, at least we are at 4.11, we're at 4.88, so we haven't hit that. So if you got guys, just uh, let's be rational here. This means that if, if there is another currency crisis, the ringgit has to hit. 4.88, just as simple as that, 4.1, okay? So Qatar is being ostracized. Now you know, right, Qatar is the first country to go out of OPEC. Uh, Qatar has problems with Saudi Arabia, okay? So I don't know, maybe I'm on the American blacklist. I take Qatar Airways somewhere to Pakistan. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm destroying myself, right? <laughs> so I don't know, but after I will show you flags. Because, you know, we, we are part of one brotherhood, okay? We're part of one gang here. Qatar is part of our gang. Uh, Erdogan has to go. Uh, you know, the, uh, if you know what happened, and we'll look at the chart after for the Turkish lira, and we'll also look at the charts for, yeah, the Egyptian uh, pound, yeah, the Egyptian pound, and uh, also the Pakistani rupee. Now, uh, you know that Turkey is the 13th largest economy in the world. You know that last year, the lira went to 7 to the US dollar from 4 in the space of a few months only, okay? almost doubling. Uh, if you look at 2009, the lira was 1 US dollar was 1.2 lira. Now 1 US dollar is like 5.7 lira. It went to a period of 7. And no country can withstand this, okay? Turkey is now in a recession, see? So you see where, uh, you know, you, if you are in the country and, and there's nothing wrong with you, uh, there's nothing terribly wrong with you guys, uh, not, you know, don't, don't, don't blame yourself for being in the country, but if you're in the country and it comes under a currency attack, you might be rendered poor, okay? So this is, this is something very dangerous stuff. Okay, OPEC, there is an effort by Russia and China to transact oil in other currencies. Uh, if that happens, there will be war because you know the oil currency now is the US dollar. If you uh, kill off the demand for the US dollar, what will happen? The US has too much debt, right? The US dollar will crash, the American economy will crash. That's the other way you see it. Now, uh, if you see what's happening uh, last year, I think Russia and China are buying a lot of gold, especially China. There are a lot of governments buying a lot of gold now. So this is quite odd, right? Because, uh, you know, when governments buy a lot of gold, then they tend to know that something is bound to happen. Uh, Turkey is buying Venezuelan gold. So can you see the relationship? Uh, birds of a certain feather tend to flock together. So, you know, when Turkey buys Venezuelan uh, gold, then it's not good to the international community. What happens to their currency? It depreciates. It's just as simple as that, okay? And uh, you know Russia was buying a lot of Bitcoin. So here's the deal. Uh, and this is why we have to have inter-market analysis. Okay? If not, you're, you're not going to go out to trade. You, you don't even have an idea what to trade. So I think that, you know, I told you guys that, that the real, see a lot, a lot of people were, were, were wondering, you know, what was happening with Bitcoin? What in the world was happening with Bitcoin when it went down? 
And as I told you, the billionaire mentor laid the toll. It was a very simple reason. Bitcoin went down because the mining rate or the hash power for Bitcoin was controlled by the Chinese. So the Americans, there is no Satoshi Nakamoto. What is Satoshi Nakamoto? <laughs> okay, there's no such thing as Satoshi Nakamoto. So the Americans basically pushed down the price of Bitcoins to drive these people out of the market. And what did he say? Once the hash power is back stable, not you know, any more dominated by the Chinese, then Bitcoin will start going up again. Just as simple as that. Now, I think what's happening now, because they want this oil has something to do with Bitcoin, okay? Because they want to change that medium of transaction. Maybe for oil, maybe another thing that Russia is buying so much Bitcoin that suddenly has driven up the demand for Bitcoin, especially the last two weeks, right? Bitcoin suddenly went from four to five. It surprisingly has stayed about five, okay? So it is more than just speculation. I think it's, it's, it's really uh, fundamentals are changing. Uh, the end of fiat is definitely uh, nearing. Uh, he has said that Bitcoin is not the answer. There is another, I think this is asset-based token because uh, he always talks about asset-based token in the sense that your asset or whatever coin you have must be supported by an asset. And this is why for the ICO that I'm advising on, we are developing a token that is backed by gemstone. So, you know, when you buy the gemstone, if the silly, uh, <laughs> if the silly uh, token goes to $1, you know, if, if you offer it at 10 and it goes to $1, then you better buy it because that has the backing of a gemstone and that means you kind of get a 90% discount on gemstone, which, which is a good deal, okay? Because you want it, because the token will allow you to even exchange for uh, rubies or emeralds and, and this kind of thing. Already polished, uh, polished and also certified, okay? Certified by American or, or Swiss standards. So you really want to do that. So before the end of whatever, you know, I mean, the transition to fiat is, 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 is probably starting. Uh, the transition outside from the US dollar to something is probably starting. Uh, the market makers should push up Bitcoin, uh, whales playing with themselves. So again, they might play this game again where they just push it up. Uh, my advice to you is if they push it up, uh, make your money and <laughs> get out, okay? Get out. So uh, again, as far as Malaysia is, 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 is concerned, I think things are improving a lot now. Uh, Mahade is still in, in full control, you know. Uh, it's kind of weird, right? It's kind of weird that uh, Mahade was said, or, or rather, the president of PAS and also the president of UMNO has said that they will support Mahade in the event of a no, vote of no confidence. So that, I think, is good. It shows that he is in control because if he's not in control, I think we're going to have a lot of problems, okay? So, so any questions until now before we go to the flags? And I will show you uh, this, this thing regarding flags are very, uh, you know, very, very, uh, you know, very, very crucial, very, very critical because I want you to know uh, where, where Malaysia is uh, in terms of, 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 of all of this, okay? who our allies are. Uh, because if you know who our allies are, then, then you can make the association uh, that, that if our allies are suffering, for sure we will suffer too because we are part of the same gang. And this is it, okay? So, uh, you know, we, we just signed the ECRL contract with China. Uh, this is good. We are now underneath uh, China. <laughs> We're under China now. So I suggest you guys to look Look at the yuan, okay? <laughs> if the yuan depreciates, then we will also depreciate. Uh, again, uh, these countries, uh, with, okay? uh, Brunei, Malaysia, Indonesia, are these countries next? Uh, so, you look at these countries of which we are part of the gang, gang, you know, this is part of our, our alliance, uh, Turkey. You know, these, these countries are associated together with Turkey, Iran, uh, Egypt, uh, Pakistan, Qatar, Qatar, okay? And uh, you notice that there's uh, Saudi Arabia missing here? Saudi Arabia is a different gang, okay? Saudi Arabia is a different gang. Ah, please remember, this is kind of our gang, 
uh, you saw that you know we're, we're setting up a lot of investments in, in 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 Pakistan and all that. So let's see some of the currencies. Do not be too concerned. Okay, it's not like it's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, yeah, but uh, note that this is eventually going to uh, make way, uh, whatever it is. So just be prepared for the depreciation. Okay, let's look at Turkish Lira. Let's look at USDTRY. Okay, not USDRR. USDTRY. I'm just going to go to the weekly chart so that you understand what this is. This shows you the, uh, yeah, the currency in weeks. This. So if you see how this looks, is it, you think that that's very scary? This is like, what is this? See in 2009, now let's see this. Let's see this, what was this? What is this? One point, it went even lower than 1.5, is that? Yeah, 1.14, right? And then you see this currency in 2018 last year, 7. Wow, now it's 5.7. So that is something that is uh, very, very, uh, this is very, very uh, scary. If you are in the country and you see this uh, giving way, uh, that's very scary. Uh, you know, have you seen the ringgit like this? Yeah, it has happened like this. Now that's TRY. Let's see. Uh, so we're, we're just going through our friends here. Our friends, okay? Let's see Pakistani rupee. USD PKR. Okay. This is not good also, right? So suddenly you see there, uh, in 2009, it was like 60. Okay, $1 was 60 rupees. Now look, look at now, 141 rupees. Last year, it went from 100 to almost 141, 40%. Look at this move. 2018, yeah, December 2017. Like, just look at that massive, massive move on Pakistan, okay? Now let's go to another one. Uh, USD, let me find Egyptian, Egyptian, pound. yeah, let's go to US dollar Egyptian pound, just look at that, look at that 17.2 and yet in 2012 or 2009, this is even worse, it was only 5.38, oh, okay, in 2018 it was 8.77 and now it's 17. Double, right? Everything double, 40%, 50% double. And uh, the next one, who's worse is okay? Iran. Iranian real, right? Uh, yeah. USD. I am. USD. I yeah. Iranian real, yeah. Iranian real here. IRR. There. Look at that. So you look at. Even in the Iranian real, it went in 2013 from 12 to 42. Mm. It's even worse. Times three. Okay. So this is getting into the uh, realm of the really, really, really scary. Okay. Now another one. So let's look at ringgit. Uh, USD and YR. Yeah, so you see that? You see that? 3, 2, 4.5, right? So we did. So then uh, I think here is where we were uh, unpacked. Yeah. So here 4.8, right? See that? Yeah. So we haven't seen this in a long time. You know, we were unpacked. We went down to around 3.15, 2.96 here. And guess what? And now we're back. Then we went to 4.5, and then, uh, yeah, then we're now 4.11. So if Malaysia has depreciated by 50% in, in the past, then you can say 
safely that it might depreciate by that much uh, again. Okay? Uh, who else is, is, is there? China, Chris, Scotia, let's go share. So, so what we have seen basically is, uh, you know, uh, don't, don't count Qatar. Qatar is too rich. <laughs> it will not be affected, okay? They have too much reserves. But I think the concern here is that most of our friends here have already been attacked. Uh, we are part of, uh, we are part of uh, the friends of China now. Uh, you know, there's a lot of Chinese investments flowing in, into Pakistan and all. So our signing of the ECRL and uh, Mr. Mahadir, Mr. Mahadir attending the BRI Belt Road Initiative later this month shows that we are, nay, we are really warming up to China. So when that comes, guess what? I think it's only fair that you guys uh, have to be ready for another depreciation because, uh, you know, uh, those who have been following me or who have been my students know that Darth Sidious is never wrong. The issue is when it will happen. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So I hope we are all uh, ready for this. One US going to six. I don't know. I think he says it may go worst case six to seven. If six to seven sustain. Okay, no, no offense against anyone, but I think there will be a sustained attack against the Nusantara or ASEAN Muslim economies. Indonesia, Malaysia, and Brunei. I'm not sure of the Philippines, but I think the Philippines uh, will kind of also, uh, kind of also suffer. But now, and after, uh, because of this, you know, my... My head is very confused now. I, I have to think about a lot of other things. You know, a lot of other things are going to my mind. I can discuss with you what I'm doing. It's fine, you know, because this is not only about trading. I think uh, whatever it is, yeah, you can tap my brains on what I've been doing for the past several weeks. It's been very, very busy. And what I've been doing is I've been trying to prepare myself for for an environment where the ring falls. And if it doesn't happen, so what? Then it doesn't happen. Everything's sunkidori. But if it does happen, then I will be in a position to, uh, to really, really take advantage of this. Okay, uh, do we have any questions? You can ask in the chat or you can ask me here. Yeah. Don't be shy. You are shy. You, uh, you might miss something. So, yeah, 225 to 2. Five is very good. Okay, any questions from the young people and from the not so young people? I see the not so young to ask more. <laughs> the young people are okay. Seriously, the not so young uh, is, is, is quite good. Oops, I cannot plug in here. Anything, anything, anything? Yeah, if you're young, everything tends to yeah, everything tends to work out in the longer run. But you will be hit in solar. Eh? You are definitely, definitely going to be hit. Okay. So let me see whether that is Ah. Oh, Q&A, yeah, we have a Q&A. Oh, Anwar has cancer. Any thought if he is the best option as PM? And it's all... I mean, there is... I, I will answer it like this. It's not for me to answer whether Anwar is, uh, is the best PM. <laughs> uh, there is near. Uh, what, 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 what I'm going to say is very, very simple. There was already a rumor of a vote of no confidence. You can see it going on, right? Uh, but I think Mahade being Mahade, uh, 
always outthinks people two to three steps in front. So I think he has also checkmated those who uh, wanted to launch this boat of no confidence. Mm. To the extent of even getting UMNO support and even getting uh, past support in case a motion of no confidence was launched against him. So I think what will happen, not I think, like, I know what will happen is after May, you're going to see a lot of changes. Because I think the Pakatan Rakyat government is not really performing. So I think that they're going to do a lot of changes. And, and really, when you talk about who's running the country, I think it is uh, uh, Mahathir and Daim. So as long as Mahathir and Daim is there, uh, I kind of feel safe. Now, when Anwar comes back up, I don't know. Okay, again, guys, don't be too concerned. I'm now in the position, uh, if I don't like what's happening in this country, I can just move on. That's it. Just as simple as that. But now, as far as Mahathir is there, it's, yeah, I think he's the best man to lead the country in the face of an economic attack. Yeah, good question. Good question. Because I'm not a politician. I'm an economist. Okay? <laughs> I just want an environment where, you know, where we can make money using our investments, where, uh, you know, where our, our environment is, is, is not going to be bad. So I think the fixing of the country has begun. I think it is going to take a time, okay? But let's see what happens. Okay, anything else? Okay, any other? Okay, good. Yeah, good. live, right? Yes, I have to just cancel live. Done, okay. Okay, so again, let me Okay, now, so what has been going on in my mind? So those of you, uh, this is more for, you know, if you're young people and Kepo, you can think of this. If you're old, you better think of this. <laughs> uh, what if the US, what if the ringgit depreciates? What if the US dollar goes up? You know, what happens if the ringgit depreciates? What do we do? We have to find assets that are going up. That's it. We have to start moving those assets. In fact, we better start moving those assets now into assets that are moving up. And I will tell you what I'm doing. You, you, you know, just listen and follow me if you want. Uh, don't hold me against it. One, can we trade asymmetric fixed risk and sleep? I would rather do that. Uh, just let the trade run. I don't like to follow up and follow up every day with the trades because if you do that in this period of massive opportunities when assets move by a lot, you know, you just have one, you just have one position and you want it to run. You don't want to go in, out, in, out, in, out. I can tell you it's very risky and you're gonna move, miss the big move, okay? You don't wanna do that. Uh, any moon opportunities, what we can control. Again, as long as moon means goes up 10 times, yes. Uh, and I'm going to answer one by one afterwards. Uh, what can we control? Uh, anything you can do outside of trading? Yeah, because I don't think trading is our life, should not be our life. So uh, let's address this uh, one by one. You know, whether it's Forex, Gold, Bitcoin, bond, it, it, it doesn't matter to me, okay? Uh, you know, you see the property guy saying, property, property, property. See the Bitcoin guy, hey, come, come, Bitcoin's going to go up, moon. You see the forex there trade forex. I do I care? No. As long as it makes, it makes uh, I'm just simple as that. Okay, let, let us not get into all this. Shares is better than forex or whatever. It doesn't matter. Even shares you can make money during a market downturn. You know how you short the share, uh, but you cannot do it on BSKL. You cannot do it on the KL market, right? You can do it on the US market. So it's sama sebelah. Now it's the same, everything has its own uh, movement, everything has, has, nee, has its own uh, nee. yeah. the way it behaves during a crash and all that. You just need to know what to do. So what if the ringgit depreciates? Uh, again, I learned this in Pakistan. Uh, and I saw this in Pakistan, because Pakistan, you just saw the clip, right? That the, uh, nee, the, uh, the rupee was, was going up almost in a straight line against the uh, US, uh, no, the US dollar was going up almost in a straight line against the rupee. So when I was in Pakistan, I got to know, I said, how in the world do you guys live in this environment? 
You know what? If I go bus. Go. Yeah, go. Go bus, go bus. And there, if you go to places like Happy Bank, they don't charge you for the safe. Oh. Yeah, not because they know it's such a problem. They get free to you. <laughs> Must be everyone doing it. Are we in Malaysia before you call your public goal region and all that? Can I get a public goal agency? <laughs> we have a goal account. You can open a goal account, you know, in CIMB and RSB and all that. I suggest that part of your holdings go then. Go. Because in times of economic turmoil, gold holds really steady. Lah. So those Pakistanis who are in gold are really enjoying the rise then. So gold, gold is cool. Uh, what about US dollar? Yeah, I have uh, things in US dollar also. But as I said many times, remember we are under Mr. Mahade. What do you think happens uh, when the ringgit goes around the US dollar? I, I think we will be forced to close our US dollar accounts. We have to be countrymen. You know, we have to uh, show a lot of patriotism to the country. But that, <laughs> that ringgit. So I'm more comfortable you guys have a gold account. Uh, the other thing that 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 that, that we have uh, uh, in uh, Pakistan that I found out what okay try to guess what goes up when the market goes down or when the currency goes down after a certain period that is an asset uh, that really goes up super duper goes up and the, the asset is what now property so in Pakistan they actually buy property uh, yeah. It's a very good hedge against the rupee coming down. And uh, I, I was told, again, I don't know. I think the Pakistan uh, property market is very frothy now. But uh, they kind of like, you know, if, if you have a good location and all that, you basically can double your money. This is like Malaysia in 2010, right? 2009 to, uh, what, 2013, I saw the value of my house triple, like, eh? <laughs> I mean, that happened. So in Pakistan, you kind of can double, and then you buy an office shop, can double, double. It's like one becomes 400,000, becomes 400,000. The other one is 100,000, becomes 200,000. So uh, that's how you really, you know, a way to make money in a depreciating environment. So, you know, depreciation is not bad, you know. If you have more ringgit, uh, yeah, your, your nasi lemak may go up. <laughs> Your roti chanai will go up, but it doesn't matter as long as you get more ringgit because you are earning foreign currency, then it's good. Next, can we trade asymmetric? Yes, of course. After this, we're going to teach you how to trade asymmetrically so that fix risk and you can sleep. Okay, now because in your quest of, uh, of uh, looking for more money, please don't make yourself sick. Moon opportunities. Well, we've seen, uh, and after this, I'll show you also, we've seen in this environment of, uh, of uh, you know, the cryptos going down, I'll show you an environment. Uh, there are good companies. There are good companies which you can invest in. And I will show you after an example of a company where I put in 25,000 US, which is like uh, 25,000 is like... Uh, 100,000 ringgit, right? And this uh, company uh, has gone up. It's offering a buyback. Or it's about to go to an exchange. It's offering a buyback at 12.5 times. So you see the 100,000 that I put in is now worth 1.25 million. So you still can get luck. Uh, then you say, but I don't have 100,000. Uh, betul, betul. But you could have 10, right? So 10 becomes 125,000 or whatever. That's also very good. Uh, so, you know, not all things are bad, okay? It's just harder to find the good opportunities uh, outside of trading. I don't know, like, but... <laughs> okay. So, what I've been doing during the, the, the past uh, few... Uh, the past month, actually, before I went to Pakistan, uh, I, was, I was busy uh, renting out my homes and trying to sell one of those homes. Because you know why? This is what will happen. I'll tell you why. I will tell you why. What am I doing? Uh, I don't think... Let me draw. This is what I believe will happen. The market will go down and then it goes up, right? Always go down, go up. Go down, go up. Okay? Now, the thing is, if you were in Malaysia, it goes down and it will go up like that. Okay? But if you were good enough to find a market like Pakistan, which I found, 
it's going to go up like that. But it's still going to go down first. I would like to be in a market like that. Thank you very much because I'm old. So I advise a very young person. You know, you, in order to be really make money, you have to reduce your IQ here. Please reduce your IQ by half. Rather than being in Malaysia where I really have to look at the property, I have to go there, or call a lot, I do an evaluation here or there, uh, I have so many competitors, okay? Uh, I would rather be in a market like Pakistan. After the market goes down, I think the market is going to go down very, very soon, and buy something that will go up even more. That's as simple as that. Doesn't matter. You know, so, betul lah, you know, semakin, I don't know, uh, you know, people say that that as we grow older, we have wisdom. I don't know, I don't think it's wisdom, I just think pure laziness. I just don't want to think. <laughs> it's very tiring if you want to think at all this, okay? Uh, again, some of you may not, may not be here. How old are you? How old are you in 97? <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> How old are you in like five? Five. And okay. you were in secondary school in ninety-five. Okay. okay. Let me tell you, you guys missed the best period of mission. <laughs> Let me give you a piece of advice here. Huh? Okay. That was the best period of mission. Okay, the stock market doubled. Anything you throw at that time, only about weird, even my stupidest property investment in the world, in Suruman, in the boondocks, you know, because I was so kind of good at that time. <laughs> even then, can make money, you know? It's, a, it's crazy. And then the 97 crisis came, but, but, but before that, it was just amazingly. Uh, uh, easy to make money, you know, whether in the stock market, whether in the property market, and all. And then when the stock market uh, crash and the Asian financial crisis came, of course, all of us were always saying, oh, Malaysia will come back to that old age. Malaysia will come back soon. Don't worry. And you know what? At 52, this year 52, it has not come back. Only the prime minister has come back. Those periods have not come back. So you know what I'm going to tell you? Don't go. Go to a country or go to a place that is in a similar development cycle like Malaysia in the States. Then you realize the gains, the same gains, okay? Because if you don't do that, you're going to have to work very hard for your money now, okay? It's going to be very, very difficult. So you hope you learn something from that. That advice alone is going to save you a lot, you know, rather than just Hoping it will happen, hoping it will happen and all that, guys. It does not work like that. No, it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. So to me, yeah, it doesn't happen. Uh, you know, that doesn't happen. Uh, there, there, there's nothing. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'd rather go to a place where, where you know, where, where, where really I, I play a better role in, I can play a good role in, in kind of making it happen, okay? Here are all my drawings. Okay. So, this is the thing with trading, okay? So, we know, now, now we have a problem, right? We know that assets are going to fall or ringgit is going to fall. Uh, property, I'm ready. I just, I hope I can, I can sell one property before the ringgit goes down more. I really hope so. Uh, you know, but because I bought it at a low price. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm really selling at a very, very low price. Okay, even the real estate was, the real estate agent was really shocked, you know, willing to throw at that price. Yeah, willing to throw it. I got it for cheaper. <laughs> so I got it from a desperate buyer. So now, even though I'm desperate, I can still make good money on that. Oh, no, okay, I'm just selling off well because I want to be in cash. I want to be in US dollar or gold, and when all this storm goes back, I want to deploy that money where I can make the most money next time. Okay, so trading is very difficult. We want to focus, we want to get our sleep, we want to focus on our jobs, we want to focus on our career. The thing is, when you want to go on trading, like uh, you know, most of other people are teaching, let's be frank here do you really have the time? 
the idea is I don't think you really have the time then. Uh, do you really have balls of steel or platinum to withstand the up and down, the up and down? I don't think so. I think when you go into trading, you will know, right? Which is why many people fail anyway. When they're in the heat of the moment, they make very bad decisions that result in losses. They get very stressed like the guy on the screen there. And is the timing correct? I, for one, want to catch markets during large moves. Okay, you don't want to catch market during small moves. It's very hard to trade, you know. It's better not to trade. So after this, I'll show you why that I think this is the time to catch another move down. Okay, down, okay. Uh, we don't know when it will happen, but we know it will happen because it's already been 2008. They always say there's a 10 year cycle, right? So 2008 means things have to start happening in 2018. That's one, 2019 or 2030. Okay, so it is going to happen. Don't know when. I'll tell you when. Uh, yeah, the billionaire mentor should know when when this is going to happen. So, I just make I, I just want to make sure that I am already there. I am there and and, and really ready to take action. Okay. So again, uh, as far as the depreciating currency is concerned, I'm not really worried. Okay, I'm not really worried about uh, me uh, about depreciation. Now uh, I see in Pakistan people are happy. Uh, People are dedicated to change their assets, which rise and rise. They keep money in gold, gold bars. So, having been in Pakistan, I know you can survive and maybe even thrive in an environment where the currency depreciates. I think people there, because of the uh, situation there, they have come to accept it. Okay? They really have come to accept all this, and this is really, really very, very good. Okay, uh, this is like, like. We come to accept it. Whereas we in Malaysia, we still complaining. <laughs> we shouldn't do that. Okay, we just still accept and, and, and really uh, start to move on. So as long as uh, uh, we know that things are happening, I think things are happening now. We now need to know. You know, uh, we now need to know uh, what assets to buy and then how to position ourselves in the market. Really, this is what uh, this is about. Where do we position ourselves uh, in the market so that we can make uh, uh, maximum impact? So, the trading, the trading way that I advocate is not for you to kind of guess of where things are going. You have to know where things are going. Okay, you have to have the answer. Uh, you know, Malaysia so Alan Bocho. You have to have the set of questions and you have to have the set of answers. And then you trade adjusting to that to that to that situation, okay? To that situation of the Soalan Bocho, which which is happening. I would rather do that. So, so uh, this is the way we trade. It's it's very very different from from the way that uh, other people trade. So uh, you know the most important trading secret is you know the answer. You know where the markets are going to. That's all. You know where the markets are going to, you know the direction, you can put in your strategies, and then it's just a period of controlling the risk. By that, you will be able to make money. Like. Not easy, eh? uh, but, but we'll show you how to do it. So, uh, you know, this is uh, Moses. So, uh, our Moses here is, is the billionaire mentor because he seems to know where the market is going. So, if we can use his overall predictions for the direction of the market and buy the assets and stick to the assets until they make money then we will also make money so uh, this is this is just one of our students that will talk sensation free open my eyes but how to make minimal sensation free open my eyes but how to make money in a crypto minimal uh, capital even without capital you can make money and i've heard uh, can you believe that even in crypto you can make money without capital you know you don't need capital to make money with crypto so those are the money. one things that we found out last year they made a lot of money, money without uh, capital uh, zero capital so far and uh, and then from that i learned a lot, a lot about other things uh, related to the economy how the money goes in the world 
So again, when you're doing all this, I think it's important to know the state of all the markets because uh, I think the biggest mistake we can do if we are only focusing on one, one market goes down, we cannot uh, compensate for the losses in that market. And then we continue to make mistakes and we put good money in a very bad investment and then we lose almost if not all the money. We don't want to do that. We want to have the choices on, on where we put money to maximize our gains. Okay, so again, this is where we need a bigger direction from someone who is really connected to the, uh, let's see, like the global investing community and Dutch CBS is there, okay? That will be the man mentor, okay? So uh, again, the way to trade, uh, I think it's, it's not difficult, it's easy, as long as you know where it's going to. You trade the patterns and you need to ignore the rest, okay? There are certain patterns that happen, okay? And one of the, uh, what we do uh, when, when I recommend things, and after you see my recommendations, you're going to see the results also, uh, is, is I look at very, very common patterns, okay? As long as you find the common patterns, you just trade those patterns and you just ignore the rest, okay? And you should do it in a way that is also done asymmetrically. That means you risk a little to make a lot of money. You don't need to risk a lot to make a little money. Don't ever do that. You will, you will die, okay? So you manage your risk automatically like the automatic millionaire. Let's see. Is this the video on asymmetric risk? So uh, one of the best uh, videos on asymmetric trading was done by uh, Anthony Robbins. Let's see how he describes it. Copy this. Copy. Let's go to this video here. Oops. Let me find that video uh, asymmetric trading. Okay, let's see that because that is really the principle that that I think uh, we need to use. Uh, let's go to YouTube. Listen to this video very carefully. Okay. Let's go to asymmetric trading. Fall to the Jones asymmetric trading. Share here. Let's go to new share and let's go to the pro. Okay. Okay, let's see how he does this. This is the way you should do things. If you cannot get this equation, don't, don't come. If it were easy to make money in the stock market, everybody would be doing it. They're not rich, and you know there's a reason why. I'm telling you, the stock market has changed my life, and I've learned some really simple techniques. Most investors think you take huge risks if you're going to have be a billionaire, huge risks to be really successful financially. The truth of the matter is these great investors do not take those huge risks. The vast majority do not. Asymmetrical risk reward means they try to do the least amount of risk possible with the most upside. What's going on, investors? They came from Balbo here. And as you just saw in that clip, our favorite performance coaching mini trampoline jumping giant, which if you haven't seen him jump on his mini trampoline, definitely check it out because it's pretty fun. But Tony Robbins is talking about an extremely important concept here. And this market concept is asymmetrical betting. And I know like, most of the time you want things to be symmetrical, right? For example, like an interior design, which as you can tell by this gray black land room is something I love to do. Or say for maybe even your face, which you want to be asymmetrical because if it's not, then you'd have a crooked face. And people would make fun of you, but at least you wouldn't need a mask on Halloween, right? But in the markets, asymmetry is the magic word that everyone is trying to achieve. And this asymmetry is not only important to make a ton of money, but it's also extremely important to make sure you don't blow up your account. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about in this video. Here's an example Tony gives of the market wizard Paul Tudor Jones and how he places asymmetric bets. He would look for investments where he didn't want to invest unless he believed 
if he invested one dollar, he could ultimately make five off that dollar, five to one. Now, he knows he's going to be wrong lots of times. And so he knows if I risk a dollar and I lose, I can risk another dollar. And I'm still going to be up three. You follow? He could be wrong four times out of five and break even still. So that's the secret. See, a lot of investors are all focused on the upside of the trades that they put on. But what is way more important than the upside is the downside. That's what you need to be focused on. And asymmetry lets you actually cap that. See, the thing about markets is that the complexity embedded within them is infinite. There is no way to understand every little thing going on. And even the best investors, the masters of the universe, like Paul Tudor Jones, accept that. It's like that old saying, you know, a wise man knows what he doesn't know, which actually was wouldn't be too bad of a pickup line, would it? They say a wise man knows what he doesn't know. And girl, I don't know, but I would love to know your Instagram. And maybe it's not that good of a pickup line, but if it works for you, make sure you give me all the credit and tell whoever it works on to subscribe. But yeah, the best investors focus on asymmetry because they want as much leeway to screw up as they can get. They want the ability to screw up a bunch of times, but still make a ton of asymmetry. And this time, very, very important to see. You want to screw up and still make money. That is so critical. You, because you will screw up. Who says you won't screw up? Of course you screw up. But you still have to make money. And you go into some examples like this. Time is through Kyle Bass. Kyle Bass took $30 million in 2008 and nine during the worst economic time in history and turned it into $2 billion in two years. How the hell do you do that? He never risked more than six cents to make a dollar. If he's wrong, he'd be wrong 15 times and still make money. Well, he wasn't wrong 15 times, which is how he turned 30 million into 2 billion. Okay, so how do you know if you're bad? See, so that's what you do because you, you, know, you can do it again and again and again and again. But in order to do this, remember that you need big movements like that, or big movements like that on, on any, any commodity. Yeah? And, uh, let me show you an example. I haven't made this call yet, you know, but I'm going to show you a real, real uh, simple example. I'm going to show you up to it. It's, it's, it's so obvious. You know? it's, it's amazingly obvious. Uh, let's go to Let's go to trading view. Let's go to trading view. Let's go to coffee. I may be recommending this in the near in our in our uh, our uh, what's that group? This is coffee. See, I told you I'm not for it, right? No, am I Bitcoin? <laughs> I don't care, guys. I just want to trade what makes money, yeah? Ah, I see Mr. Sharil wants his tip. Mr. Sharil wants his tip now. That's daily. Let's go monthly. Now, I don't know about you, but this is coffee, right? So now we're here, 92.8. Do you know that this is like a 13-year low? Just look at that. Isn't that something nice? Yeah. And, and just look at here. See, there are two tops here, and then it goes down. And then it goes up. Then it goes down, and then it goes up. This 13 year low here. Okay. So look. I'm just looking at the patterns of the past, okay? Okay, look, two, two, then it goes down, two, then it goes down. So just looking at this, yeah, that's what I said, just looking at this alone, you know and I know, and we don't know whether it's going to happen next week or not, we will see, the next move is going to go up. And that's where you get a big move. That's the way you do it. You're just looking at simple things like this is what I like to look at. Okay, now, once upon a time, crypto was like this, then I looked at it. Now, crypto, not like this, I don't look at it a lot. I just look at things that are like this. Now, another example is this.
This is the US dollar Mexican peso. Again, up, down, up, down, up, down. What do you think is going next? Up, down. Okay, just as simple as that. It's not easy to get it, love, but you know, you can, you can draw a line here. It just demonstrates this, uh, this uh, what do you call it? This is uh, something that's very, very, yeah. It's, it's a repeatable pattern, okay? It's something that happens again and again and again. Just look, look, look at the waves here. See, so we, we kind of tend to look uh, in things like, like this. Uh, another call that we made, uh, you know, those are in the group. You saw orange juice, right? It was orange juice. See, we even trade orange juice, okay? Yeah, I know. People say, yeah, 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 but you for us. Well, it doesn't matter, you know? And, you know, because this, this was a chart that I had. I think we were buying around here, right? We we're buying around here. See, it went up. Oh, that? And now it goes down. And now we wait. Huh? There, might, there might be another signal for this. But then we're waiting again. But then we know now that when this is ready, guess where it's going to also? This, when it's ready, is going to go up again. And that's where a lot of money will be will be made because just going from here to here on a small lot is about US 1000. So when we do trades, we target on a US 10,000 account to make around US $1,000. Okay, that's what we do. We don't want to play uh, Nila just for emphasis uh, so that you know where we're different. We're not going to emphasize the 20, 30 pips that other people do. Okay, and you, you talk about Forex, you talk about Forex traders, right? 20, 30 pips and all that, not interested not interested uh you can say that on a 10 15k account i'm only interested you know lot sizing assuming your lot sizing is not too big we're just interested in doing trades that can go 1000 us dollars okay if not i'm seriously not interested i do not have time why because i don't have time to see the trades every single day i don't have time to get stressed i just want to put it and let it run okay and let my emotions manage by myself. So let's see, uh, Nia, please look at our uh, WhatsApp to see whether I do make a call on coffee. Because I made another call, I made a call on coffee last year, which proved to be very, very good also. I recommended the buy at 96, it went up to 122, right? Orange juice, I recommended the buy. I super bro, I recommend the buy at. <laughs> and I recommended the buy at here, here. I actually recommend it here. Okay, let me check this here. I should recommend it here. Yeah, 118. Yes, 118. Yes, anyone else? 132. See? That's the kind of thing I'm looking for. Okay, so let's go back to this. Yeah, so I, I would rather look into patterns like that, right? So, you know, if you're going to play in Forex or you're going to play in crypto, you're going to play in stocks, it's not easy to find those kind of patterns. But because we look and we find, we look at multi-assets, guess what? Just go and find patterns that have something like that, okay? And uh, then they're going to really go up. Now, let me show you another example, okay? This very important example, okay? That, and I'm going to teach you something today. If you are able to hold, and as I said, because we are trading the big trends and Darth Sidious, uh, the billionaire mentor, tells us the big trends, because if he says it's going to go there, then it's going to go there. As long as you size your lots correctly, as long as you are not uh, greedy and don't do anything stupid, you will make money, period. Okay, let's see. This is the recommendation I had in uh, Nigan in, in, in February here. Okay, in February here. What did I say? Let's see whether it happened or not. Palladium goes down. If you were trading the, I will even tell you what would happen uh, if you were trading this the way that normal people trade. Lah. You have your stop loss. Lah. You, you do all your over analysis. Lah. 
in the end, you're going to lose money. But if you are able to stick with this position with faith, for the longer term, I can tell you, you are going to make money. And, and that's what we want to do. We want to be able to screw up and still make money. Because if you're not screwing up and not making money, it's not good. Luck. No? So let's see. I, uh, okay. Not that we want to do this and run drawdowns in our account. Get drawdowns in our account is a problem, but, but I just want to show you this important point here. Palladium, palladium, palladium. Okay. This is zero USD here. What the prices that, that, that I put, which is based on, you know, was that based on site so Sure. So let's see here. Palladium. Okay, let's go to palladium. It's not responsive. Okay. No. Okay, let's see. Uh, okay. you, need, you need to understand this chart. Okay, USD CHF. Uh, this was when? Uh, when? When did I make this? This is in February, right? Uh, USD CHF, USD CHF, because I got, I got, I put in a lot of positions there. Um, oh, it's not working. I thought it's not working. Okay, never mind. You go here. It's okay. So let's go to Palladium. Why that other chart is not working? Okay, so that was kind of made in February. Uh, here, 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 here. See, it came back, right? It still came back, right? Okay, it took time, but the important point is that the position still came back, and you could have pretty much uh, gotten out at break even. Done. See, short at 1580, 1625. Now let's see what happened in February. Oh, this was the second position. Oh, I, I didn't share this, right? Uh, let me share this. Let me share the screen here. Let me show you uh, the example here on uh, palladium. Um, go here, share. Okay, because this was from our classes about two, three months ago, right? Yeah, about two months ago. See? That was in February, right? Yeah, around here. Yeah, around here, right? And it still came back. That's my point. See, things don't go up forever. There's a wave, right? And if you are going to the extreme or shorting or buying at the extreme wave, it will come back. So it doesn't matter if you're wrong. You can get out at a very small profit or at least you can have a stop loss here that would have taken you out, but a small stop loss, okay? Because you know things are wrong. Silver is short at 1580, uh, this one. This one happened, okay? Let's go look at silver again. Uh, let's go to this again. Let's go look at silver, which is XAG USD. AG USD. That was around, uh, yeah. this was here, I think, yeah, this was here. Ding, 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 ding. So after this two tries, see February here, right? That, it went down. And here it went down by a lot. Done also, after how many weeks? Two, three weeks. See, now, if you ask the regular Forex trader to, 
to do this, either he's going to stop loss out or he's going to make very little profit. Understand? But if you look at the longer term, you know you can make big money, so your position is small. Why your position is small? So you can sleep at night. Understand? If the account needs to run to negative, it's okay. Because the structure was already pointing down. We know. Okay? Orange juice. Well, this one worked. Yeah, uh, we said it will go to 140 and 170. Well, it went to 132. Okay, so we were wrong. Swiss franc, up. Okay, this one was, let's see Swiss franc here. Swiss franc, US, 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 Yeah, say from here, down. So that one worked also. Okay. And you know, because uh, if you're a student, you saw this two months ago, right? I'm just showing you that if you are trading over the longer term and you don't get worried or get excited about every single movement, you know, uh, and, and, and you, don't, you don't panic, it will possibly come through. So this one was break even. Uh, this one, no. This one, you should, a stop loss would have gotten you out anyway. Like, it's now at seven, seven, six or something. So this one was, was not it. So you got it wrong cannot be perfect. But what I'm showing, throwing, showing you is that without having any particular skill, you know where you have to read all those chart indicators and all that. Let's go back here. Let's go back here. Without having, you know, without having the need, no, sorry. Without having the need to have any real uh, any, uh, chart indicators and all that, uh, this is the reality. You can let me tell you what happened. This one was break even. Profit, 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 profit. This one's done. So, what a break even, and I told you, right? It's We target 3,000, right? Target 1,000. What if the stop loss here is 500 to 1,000? It didn't matter. Over the long term, your portfolio is going to make money. But if you're short term, I don't know. Depends on your skill. If you are good, then you make money. If you are not good, you're not going to make money. So this is why, the, to me, to me, the guy who is able to remove himself from the screen and take a longer view will make money. Let me tell you that as a person who has over 400 students in Forex, in shares, in cryptocurrency, I see a lot of people, uh, and you can see this, and my students know this, I know he's laughing. They block, then they go quiet. What do you think happened? You know what happened, right? Whereas I'm just still doing the same old thing that they do. I'm being the same old boring me. Nampata. So that's why you have to adjust your yourself. Okay, we're not here about excitement. Excitement. Uh, I think there are a lot of other gurus out there that can teach you. Uh, she wants those exciting. Things. No, no, no. We are gonna hold, 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 hold until it happens. And if the structure change, then we come out. It doesn't matter, right? You saw our win just now. That. It's that. Let me show you another example here. Okay. This was uh, actually last year, actually last year. So, what did we say there? Uh, and I will issue another script in our class next week, okay? Now, this was last year. I said this is round one, round one, round one, round one, round one. We said it's like this. Market will move higher in terms of volatility in October. Small crash in October. November, it will recover, showing signs of complacency. In December, all hell will break loose. This was in September of last year. Let's see the chart. I'm not God. But I got this information from the billionaire mentor, and I'm going to show you what happened. And those of you who know what happened, right? let's go here and uh, yeah. uh, let's go share the screen again. Share for you. Can you share the screen? Yeah, I want to share this. I want to share Google Code. Uh, 
No, it's not sharing my screen yet. Yeah. Okay, we'll just share this. Uh, I don't know why my other, this one is not working, but okay, let's see SPX. SPX, let's change it to weekly. Okay, it doesn't matter if you know, just as long as you know how to read charts. So what did I say there? What did I say there? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, there will be a small crash in October. Can There will be a small crash in October. Betul? Betul? Things will get complacent in November. Betul? Betul? Can Until December and then in December all hell will break loose. Betul tak? Wasn't it accurate? Can Terrible. I show you again. This is one of my previews last year. It came true. Not because I'm clever, because I put the information together from someone who knows what's going to happen. And we will teach you how to do that. And let me ask you a question. If you know this, couldn't you just take the trade and go to sleep and don't bother? Wait for it to mature lah. Then you make money, you get out. Okay? And I'm telling you what's going to happen next. This is going to happen next for sure. Big Ambar dulu. Wait, let me show you the knee. Let me show you the knee. Let's, let's go change it. Okay, take the picture. You got the picture right now. Take again the prediction here. Because I'm going to issue another prediction next week. Why? Because it's time. It's time lah. I, I have enough information to do it. Before this, I did not. And then you're just going to trade like that. So, right? Crash in October, November, signs of complacency. December, all hell will break loose. And then what did we say? We said this. Uh, we said that this market is going to do this. This market is going to come out like this and then down gun. Well, it didn't happen. It went straight up eh, like that. <laughs> so what's going to happen? This is what's going to happen. It's going to go up like that and then it's going to tag it down. That's it. So let's look, that's why I said next, next week is, is the time to issue the script again lah, so that you can trade and go to sleep. Then we'll see, Tampani. Look at this very, very carefully. Look, it's going to tag the top again. Nampata, it's very, very obvious. This thing is going to tag the top again. This one here, one, two, like that, like that, like that, probably this, and then down. That's what's going to happen. And next week, we'll show you how we derive that formula and we'll draw a script so that you can trade. Now, if you know that the market is going to go down from here, you know what you're going to do. This is what you're going to do. You are going to do this. Uh, let, let, if this is your position, uh, you're going to try short from here. Okay, it goes down and then it goes back up again. It didn't work, you short again and short again until the thing gives up and go down. That's all you need to do. Remember last year what we said, short, 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 short. Happen again. Same thing, we're going to start, we're going to do this next week. Short, short, short until it happens. Don't in, out, in, out. Because you know why? We are at extremes. You know I don't like to play in the middle, but can but we can play in the middle here going down. But that's just one example, okay? Oh, let me let me show let me show you on this. Let me share this again. Sorry, I want to share the charts again. Show you here. There. Okay, you get all you need to do here because you know it's gonna come back like that. Okay. So this is what's gonna to happen to the market. It's very simple. It's gonna go like that, and then it's gonna go like that, up, down. So you wanna be here to short, 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 short. I'm gonna tell you how to do that without you panicking and losing it. Okay, that's, that's the idea, you know, because if you know a market is at an extreme, ready to make it go down, you want to put in a position, and yet, you do not want to be jumpy every single time, right? You do not want to be calling me every single time. It's not wrong, it's going to go down. Like, I don't know. As long as you protect yourself, it can be done. So you put in the trick, remove the emotion and wait. 
Those of you who are religious can pray too, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay, let's go back to our PowerPoint here. That is what we want to do, okay? Now, this is the big trait that, that Nila. So we're going to redraw all this. We're going to develop the script next week and then we're going to see the positions that you can go in. Okay, now, last six week prediction, last week prediction. Aussie bullish means Aussie go up. Euro bullish means Euro go up. CHF bullish means CHF goes up. Mexican bearish go down. Ruble, uh, ruble is bearish. USD bearish. Okay, now look at this Aussie Euro and also near uh, Aussie Euro and Frank. Let's, let's go look. Let's go look. Aussie USD. This I came with this. I do it on every Sunday. So please watch the group. Please watch my near. Please watch my uh, my WhatsApp group. This is on Sunday, right? So let's go. Uh, do I have a four hour chart here? Let me show you four hour. Fifth April, right? Monday was what? Fifth. Monday was six, right? Six. Six time. So here's the deal. Come out on 6 April. You buy here. If you are a Forex trader, you know what would happen. You've been stopped out here, right? But since we already told you this is going up, guess what happened after that? Did it go up? Yes. Yes. Yes, it did. Euro. Ah! What? Did, did the same thing. Swiss, did it go down? Yes. Look at that. Mexican, it hasn't happened yet. Uh, ruble, it hasn't happened yet. I have a position there. I'm not panicking. So I just have to wait it to go back up. I'm expecting this to go back up like that, okay? So I'm just waiting here. This looks like a very, very bottom. I might take another position there. So, you know. Some things I just wait, I take another position. Some things, you know, it happened, it happened. Now, here's another thing. See, I'm showing you live things, and you can see on Sunday, VIX is bullish. Live cattle bearish. Lean hawks, extremely bearish. Ma'af to Padora, wrong Muslim, but I am showing this as a point. So, you guys are near. Yes. Guys are probably, oh, this is very funny. It trades everything. Yeah, I trade everything that makes money, okay? It doesn't matter whether Forex, uh, crypto. Uh, I mean, as long as it makes money, I want to be in the trade that makes money, okay? Uh, let's go here. Let's go cattle and live box. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, let's go this, right? Uh, Pogs. Don't touch the screen eh? for all Muslims. Eh? Haram. <laughs> so I told you guys, I think I stole in my group, right? It's time to short, right? At somewhere, at somewhere. Where did I tell you to short? Somewhere here, gun. Jatuh, gun. Eh, not you, Muslim, but I told the uh, Chinese. <laughs> So to all the Chinese who are on the Zoom, you can chart again next week. Trust me, you'll go back here. Okay, live cattle. Huh? <laughs> and those who are you in the group know that I was asking you guys to short at 1.30, right? Now it's here. Last week it went down from 126. When I said it was here, it went down here. Correct? So you know that we have this crystal ball. Again, I don't know when it will happen. We just know it's going to happen. So you got to manage your positions, okay? That's all. Okay, so it, 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 it does happen. Now this one is a sad story for me, lah, because I was busy moving. In fact, I was busy moving from two condos in April. I was like, 
telling people in my group, oh, you got to short this, you got to short this, you got to short this. So if you know options, you're supposed to buy a put option. However, in my stupidity, I bought a call option. <laughs> so I don't give it back to I'm like, I cannot also. Why do you want to Please look at our prediction this week. Okay. Let's go back. Hang on. So this, like this, all people do not really have to look at the screen every day. Mana boleh. You can't survive, okay? Uh, so I've been all bearish. Platinum pausing but bearish. Okay, again, those of you in the group know, right? We had a long discussion on this, on platinum. I said it was going to fall, right? What did one of our students say? Yeah, finally fall. Yes, it will fall. Of course it will fall. But sometimes we have to wait. Fall, correct? See, so you guys thought it was forex. No, it's not about forex. It's about trading anything that moves, except crypto, like crypto is separate. Yeah. Why do you have to go in forex if we know that platinum is going to move down? If we know that index is going to go down, or we know that another instrument is going to go up? Why? 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 Why are we insisting on trading on forex? Let's trade whatever moves. Okay, let's trade whatever is going to move. Okay, let's show people platinum again. Yeah, this, this is platinum, by the way. See, it went down, right? Nicely down. I don't know where this is going to go, but I know if it cracks this, it might go down some more. But let's see. Let's see what, 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 Nila. Let's see what my crystal ball says. I have to do more analysis this weekend. But the thing is, I'm just showing you that it can be done. Okay, you don't have to go and monitor the screen every single time, which you don't want to do, though. Seriously, seriously, do not want to do that. Let's go back to that. So, this is the trick now. Now, if you look at every forex trader, the biggest, the biggest uh, enemy of all traders, uh, including all forex traders, is the stop loss. Okay. It's, it's really the, 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 yeah. the biggest traders uh, have this enemy called the stop loss because whenever they put in the stop loss, they will suffer from the stop loss. You know, the stop loss always gets them before they can make any profit. So, if you want to do trading, you should technically remove the stop loss. This is a fact. But you also do not want to remove the stop loss in case the account goes haywire. So how do you do this? Okay. So this is uh, near our Sensei dah banyak kali. I, I told people already, okay? Sensei dah banyak kali cakap dah kat dia ni tau. Tak balik, tegak, you know, stop loss lagi. This is enough. You have failed me for the last time. <laughs> If not, you will have a headache and until the end of time, I can bet you uh, you're not going to make any money. Seriously, I'm going to be stressed out. And then you're going to be my hater. <laughs> kind of bad. So how do you remove the stock loss? Okay, here. This is from one of our students, right? Big prosperity. Thanks for the fish weekly tips. Been super useful. Coco went like crazy, right? There, Coco went like crazy, cattle dipped down as I had predicted. But she didn't want to short cattle because she's an animal lover. Everything you call on is spot on. Yes, it is. Okay, USD TRI using Bisco as Forex. I might want to buy this instead of ZA because ZA has been choppy. ZA is South Africa. So, do you know that what we trade is not what other people trade? Nothing. Because others you see Euro, USD or whatever, USD, if you were, but you know we're trading different things, right? See that? That's why we can sleep. Lah. Okay, now, the next one is very important. Huh? Very important. This is how you do it. If you don't want a heart attack, lah, huh? I advise you not to, not to, this is my friend. Good friend recently had a heart attack. Here, no, no, no. Options much easier to manage because it is already a fixed risk. So you put it there and you let it go. 
Tak payah tengok-tengok. No need to see and no need to always monitor. Okay? Because if not, you're going to see it every single day. And you're going to see it every single day. You're going to be, your emotion, you, you cannot control your emotion. And most likely, you're going to make a wrong decision. You cut loss and then it goes up. And then you say, ah, oh, I should have made money. See, listen to this. Spot means not using options. Right? Using the underlying instrument gave me a heart attack. Look at this. I tend to lose money because I will cancel out. Nampak tak? This is real. This is like 99% of the investors. It's hard to wait when you see massive drop down. Nampak tak? Because when you see your account negative, you know what you do? You will panic. And the panicking causes you to make a wrong decision. But here it is. Option, you chill and wait. And that really is the secret to making money. Just as simple as that because you can see that we know what to call. But the timing. I mean, there are times when I say that, you know, you go, you wait first, you wait first. But then it moves already. And then we're too scared to move so we miss the trade. There are times when we say, you go in first, so you go in first. Alamak, we should have gone in the second time. But could you have withstood that massive drawdown? If you were to spot, I can bet you, you cannot have withstood the massive drawdown. Even I cannot tahan. I cannot tahan, okay? You lagi lah tak boleh. I know you cannot on. But in option, it doesn't matter because you're fixed risk. You have a maximum loss. That's it, that's it lah. And the positions tend to come back. See, everything you call the spot on, yeah. So we do have a tendency, I think our accuracy is about 80-90%, but you've got to be patient and options removes that risk. Okay, so the options allow you to hold on, okay? Hold on is uh, something like this. Ah, see me? It's called hodl. You know hodl? Hold on for dear life. Hold on for dear life is quite difficult for people. But again, if you have options, you know that you can sleep and there is already a fixed risk. It cannot go below. For example, you buy an option for 600 US, that's it. You can only use 600 US in the account. You buy an option for 60 US dollars, you can lose a maximum of 60 dollars in the account. That's it. Will not go more. Okay? However, if you buy spot and you don't have a stop loss and it goes against you, you are dead in the water. If you buy a spot and you have many, many stop loss, it will kill you slowly because you stop loss here, stop loss here, stop loss here, you have no mood and you overtrade and you will most likely lose money. So the best way that we do is, if you're experienced like me, you can tahan, you can buy spot. If not, just use options and wait. That's how you make uh, really, really, nila. that's how you uh, kind of make the, the, the bigger gains, you know, with, with, with what I think is, is a good play in, in commodities, uh, all that, la. commodities where the precious metals like gold and silver and, uh, you know, indices and all that. That's, this is a better way, a much, much better way to trade. Okay, any questions? Okay, any questions? Ask for Nila. The next one we cover cryptocurrency. Now, crypto is a different ball game altogether. Okay, questions. Come back. Come on, come on. Because you know, markets are very volatile now. So, down, up, down, up, down. Um, I'm worried if you guys don't have a good control of your emotion. You might just kneel up. You might just pull the trigger very early and you're going to lose up the move. So again, uh, when we do start our class in energy, just remember that, you know, since we want to catch the big moves, this is really, really the way to go. We've seen evidence now. Thanks to... Uh, <laughs> Melissa who has become our <laughs> in, in, in running the, the, the new methodology of trading, okay? Which I don't know. I, I, I don't think people teach this. I have not seen people teach this, you know, like buy and hold and just wait. Look it up. 
quality from it. Buy whole weight and literally do nothing. No? Pray, pray. Hmm? Pray, pray. Ah, pray. Ah, this, in, in this situation, you can pray. Because you know, one of the positions is going to hit very high, right? asymmetric. Another position is, is limited. So it goes like this. Let's just say that. Let's just say. 100, 100, 100. This one goes to 300. This one you lose. This one you break even. In the end, you have 500, which is bigger than 300. So it's still growing, right? So, yeah, it's, it's still growing. The, 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 uh, the portfolio is still growing. But of course, you can also use spots. But options is really the best now because it, it removes you. Uh, it removes you from uh, the task of really having to, uh, you know, having to uh, micromanage the trade. You don't need to do that anymore. Okay, don't need to do that. okay so uh, next week. Uh, next week, we're going to have the class on uh, options and asymmetric trading. See, I, I have a lot of recordings on Forex. You guys know that. I think there are 40, 50 hours of recordings on Forex, at least the traditional way. Lah. But really going forward, I want to focus on eh? I want to focus on options and, and asymmetric trading. So next week will be two days. There are like 40, 50 hours of the old way to do it, which you can also but I, I don't want to, I don't like to go on classes in the old way, okay? Because I think we need to focus on the new way to trade and uh, we need to really set up our trades for next week. So next week, we're going to go introduction to options, uh, risk on, risk off, buying and selling options. Uh, Sunday is a very important day because that is when we will come out with the trade ideas ready that you can trade, okay? So again, uh, five to 50 times, you, you will see a trade that we will set up next week. Lah. Okay, and uh, yeah, this is going to happen. So uh, offer this week is 4188, so that it goes to 5188, okay? So this is going to happen on Sunday next week. And plus you have 40 to 50 hours of recordings inside my Teachable group. So if you want to know the whole Jing Bang, watch all the videos. <laughs> You want to focus on making money, just focus on what we're going to teach next week. Okay, it's enough. Uh, don't try to do too many trades. Try to do a few trades and, and show you how we, you know, how we come to it. Now, next is Bitcoin. Ah. Sure. Okay, let me see. Now we are okay. Now, a lot of you want to know what's happening on Bitcoin. You know, did Bitcoin make a low at uh, 3K? Is this a wave up? Is this the time to launch an ICO? Will it come up? Well, it has. Uh, if you look at several ICOs, they are really coming back now. Uh, those that fell below their price are kind of above their price now, which is good in US dollars. Uh, so I think, yeah, cryptocurrency is coming back. Uh, for my clients, I am recommending an ICO or IEO. Um, and, uh, you know, it's going to be a very good one because I'm planning for it. I'm doing the design for it. We have partners in Pakistan and all that. Uh, so although cryptocurrency is not the final solution, they may push up the price one more time. So you really want to make sure that, that you are there. Lah. But cryptocurrency has a different approach. And those of you that were involved in cryptocurrency, I knew, I know, lost a lot of money. But the best way to go to me next year or this year onwards, first, I'll uh, show you lah. Uh, first is really to find good companies. Most important is to find good companies that are fundamentally sound and can go up during a crypto boom. Okay, because I think we will have one or two booms more before you know before the end of it. Okay, so it it is. I'm sure it is time for cryptocurrency again. Okay, so how do you discover near? How do you discover uh, how do you recover crypto losses again? You have to use the same formula again. If you guys remember, right, uh, in September 2017, there was a mini crypto winter. Now it's a crypto winter. Maybe that time it was a mini crypto winter. Uh, prices were going down. Uh, all of us felt like giving up, but our mentor, uh, you know, the billionaire mentor basically said, you got to stick with it. You got to buy ICOs. And that proved to be the right decision. 
And so now, in order to go in, we wait for the next signal from him. And his next signal is, there may be one more push to the upside, which we want to take advantage of, okay? So if you know where the market is going, you need the discipline. And you also need leverage, okay? Because this is where you have to combine the skills of Forex. Rather than buying, for example, you want to buy big. This is how it works, okay? Bitcoin is now 5,000, so you got to buy with leverage. You have to buy with leverage and trade the cryptos up. For example, if Bitcoin is 5,000, if it moves to 5,002, you only make 200, right? Based on a capital of 5,000 US, which is too big. However, if you have 10 times leverage, and you cannot always do this, you're going to burn your account, okay? So you better know where in the world the crypto is going to. You have 500 US, leverage by 10 times, this becomes 5,000, and then you trade, and then you make 200, guess what? Isn't that a good return on investment? 14 cents. That's how you want to do it. That's how you want to recover, okay, from your massive, massive crypto losses. Uh, buy on, buy and hold on for dear life. I think the hodl uh, is going to be very, very important for this, uh, but not on the near. The hodl is mostly on the ICOs or STOs or IEOs that you buy. You might want to hodl for longer because we've been there before. Find the hot companies who can change the world. Now, after the cryptos went down, okay, and everything seems to be reset, uh, we have a new world order here. And I think just like when after the uh, Nasdaq crash, you really, really need to find the good companies now, okay, who can survive uh, over the thick and thin. So just buy the hot companies uh, who can change the world and then you will do it. Okay, so do you have the discipline? Do you have the metal or platinum? You, you have to have that. Crypto, you can make more money, but you have to have a lot of patience. Okay, and I'm showing you an example of a company that's about to make me a lot of money. But most importantly, it's not about the company making me a lot of money. It's why in the world did this company make me a lot of money? This is more important okay, than the company than making money you buy a crypto, it goes up moon, moon for what? You don't learn anything. Okay, so again, I think uh, when you talk about cryptocurrency, it is the ultimate in, uh, in asymmetric trading. Uh, again, uh, there's this company called, called this one, called uh, Oolala here. Uh, I bought at, no, I didn't buy at 2.5 cents, I bought at 2 cents USD. Uh, buy back at 25 USD, so yeah, I kind of make 1 million ringgit or above. So a US 25,000 investment grows now from about 200 to 250,000. If it goes to 35 cents, it's 350,000 US. 350,000 US is about 1.4 million. So you're talking about RM 100,000 going to RM 1.4 million, okay? Yeah. This is a fact. You're talking about that. Going to one point four million in, in. yeah. In, 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 in a year or so. Now that, that is a very, very uh, good investment in, in, in anybody's book. But I think the important thing is uh, to know why, okay? To know why this investment could go uh, that much in that period of time. And, and uh, what Ulala is, okay? Very important is that it is a solution. It's really a solution for the unbanked, okay? So if you look at Pakistan and, and even in Southeast Asia, most of the people do not have a bank account. So they tend to use the phone, phone here as a bank. Uh, in fact, in Pakistan, 90% of all the near, 90% of uh, the near, 90% uh, of all the new uh, accounts are actually on the phone. 
whether it's on an application called Easy Paisa or Dash, Dash Jazz Cash. Similarly, Ulala among the Hispanic, a lot of people don't have a bank account. So if you buy something related to this, because it's the next big thing in finance, it is going to go up. Simple as that. So crypto is not like last time where you just simply go in this ICO, go in that ICO. No, now you have to really pick very, very good ICOs to go in. Okay, and for the big ones, then you have, again, you don't have to have a lot of amount of money. You have a little amount of money, you put and you wait. Lah. That's, that's really what, what I would do. Lah. So go with the flow. And this one is regulated. Lah. This happens to be that Ulala is a regulated ICO. And this is one of my students. So let's see what he says about how cryptos can go. Really, the mindset is really, really the main uh, takeaway. Lah. So, kalau kita dengan mindset yang bagus, you return easily from, for example, from my experience, from one, 100 ringgit to 15 that's what happened. Okay, he was trading. Uh, was it red coin? Some funny coin he was trading. Yeah. Yes. It's a little bit. daring, isn't it? But things can happen. Yeah, he, he just put in 100 ringgit. So you understand, they put in small amounts. They can sleep. So you put in 10, which is 1,000. If nine go bust, doesn't matter, right? One goes fifteen thousand. That's how you do it. Rather than kita, sadangana we put like two thousand in one account, or three thousand in one position, you cannot sleep. Or ten thousand in a position, ah, you really, really cannot sleep. Okay, so you gotta learn how to do all this. Yeah, spread out position, but small positions in crypto. And find the good, the, the good, the good companies to, to put in in crypto now, which is why what we are doing now, what I'm uh, really advising my me, which I'm doing the ICO that I am uh, me, uh, we are kind of uh, developing now for 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 me, for our client involves me, involves allowing uh, yeah, allowing the early investors to derive value from the appreciation of the gemstones. Okay, when the gemstones go up, it goes up. And, uh, you know, we want to hire rising, you know, we want to capture the value of rising gemstones. Moon plus moon is super moon, high probability, because we're designing this. And we can learn the lessons of past ICOs or IEOs, the ones that fail. Uh, again, uh, the chances of us succeeding are very high. Uh, we are also considering, uh, you know, uh, which blockchain to use, where we can get the most bang for the buck. But the gemstone business is something. I mean, this is another example of business. That I think now, if you want to go, you must make sure the business can go. If the business can go, I can promise you the token, the token will go. Just, just like that. But if the business cannot go, then how can the token go, right? I mean, one of the best tokens uh, last year was a company called Torrent. Bitcoin. Of course it will go, right? Because it already has a good business model. Now, the gemstone business model is quite easy. Our potential appreciations as gems move from kilogram to carats across the value chain. Because when it's brought in a rough, okay, when it's brought in rough uh, like that, they measure it in kilograms. We put it in kilograms. That sometimes there are even rocks here. They measure it in kilogram. Okay. Now, by the time you go here, it's measured in carats. So here you buy like a sack for like thousand. Here, per carat is about one thousand or two thousand. You understand? And that's where the value creation comes in because when you start here. Okay, well, because when you talk about all these mines, right, places like Pakistan, they're using very, very uh, antiquated ways of mining. Uh, it's all, you know, people go in with the hammer and chisel. Knock, 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 knock. Okay, people don't really use the scientific way to really find the location of the best gemstones. In some of the mines, they use dynamite to blow it up. The problem if you're using dynamite to blow the rocks and all the stuff, it also affects the gemstone. Suddenly, your big gemstone becomes small. And when gemstone becomes small, they become less valuable. 
you want the biggest possible, right? But using dynamite, you kind of destroy that. So, just by using modern mining techniques, you can increase the output and quality by 10 times. That's what the company is trying to do. And another thing in Pakistan is, uh, you know, when you have gemstones, uh, what you can do is, you want to buy the gemstones, there's a trust system there, which I like. Mm -hmm. If you can take it on consignment, you don't have to pay. <laughs> Only when you sell, you pay. Wow. Good or not? <laughs> I'm thinking of it doing this <laughs> consignment, okay? Yeah. But there's, a, yeah, there's an honor system, I don't play, play. Yeah. So, the good thing about this is this, there's an honor system there. You can start a business for very small, if you buy a gemstone. But, you know what? If you can pay cash immediately, you can negotiate 80% discount, 90% discount. Because it's cash! What is that? So you get 10 times here for what you usually get. Because if, if, if the gemstone says $100, okay, you take it. When you sell it, you have to give the guy 100. Why do you want to do that? If you already know the client, I give the guy 10. <laughs> and then I sell. And then I keep the value added. Now when you polish it, guess what? It goes another 10 times. So each way along this chain, this thing will go 10 times. Now without any intervention, without any intervention of all here. If it starts here, by the time it reaches here, easily, eh? easily, easily, easily. Five to eight times. So we are trying to change this equation from one here to 100. And the early investors who get in, uh, this is how the ICO is being designed. Uh, you should get a minimum of 10 times your returns if you can buy the token here. Uh. Of course, here there will not be a lot of tokens. Right? Now, of course, when the, uh, throughout the chain here, as there's more and more, then, uh, then we'll sell more. And here, there will be a lot of tokens here. So as this gemstone goes through this uh, value added cycle, the prices is always increasing. Okay, but if you're lucky enough to get the name, our ICO here or the ICO that I'm designed here, you get it for very cheap, 10 times this week. I'm inspired by Ulala, I'm going to do something like that, okay? For the early investors. So that's an example of where, but you know, in order to do this, uh, uh, he just, just cannot do it and hope for it to moon. Again, it has to be a hot business and it has to make sense. And gemstones clearly from start to finish, they can go 1 to 5 or 1 to 10. So it kind of makes sense to do this. And of course, when we modernize, they can do 1 to 100. So if they can do 1 to 100, what is a 1 to 10 token appreciation about? See, it's just as simple as that. I cannot do this in a Mahala because I don't have the margin. Not that I don't want it, I don't have the margin, okay? So now I think ICOs, you have to be careful of, 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 of business also. IEO is name. Uh, yeah, IEO is initial exchange. Now, why do you want to do that? Because really, when you have the name, when you have the exchange marketed for you, you spend less on marketing. Okay? So we've also learned a lot, you know, because the, the partner that, that we are uh, made, that we are uh, using to look at this ICO or IEO or whatever you call it, uh, they have done 15 years. When you use an exchange, you spend less on marketing. One of the one of the factors that make these guys fail is lack of marketing. Because not many people know how to market it. So, when you do an IO, you spend less because the exchange does it. But in doing the uh, thing for IO, you must also be careful that, again, they want something legitimate. They want to look at all the agreements that you have signed with the partners. In fact, there was one IEO where a client cancelled the agreement and they never released the IEO. The exchange never released it. Yeah, because it's fraud. And you did report that the, the agreement was cancelled. 
So it's good also, like we go to I.O. The cost is quite a lot, 20 BTC. Oh. Ah, but it's okay. It's, it's a small price to pay. Lah. It's a small price. Now, why is Pakistan very important uh, for this? I think Pakistan is one of the markets that is really, uh, see this, it's about to explode, okay? Unlocking cash in Pakistan. Pakistan is a cash economy. Imagine that that economy, because now there's a lot of things for the unbanked. Because our token that I'm designing is backed by gemstone. So you can just store it there. As the price of the gemstone go up, the price of the token will do the natural process to get it up. So now, uh, you know, Pakistan to introduce Bitcoin regulation. Now, Pakistan is uh, banning all forms of cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, but they are going to introduce Bitcoin regulation. Why? Because this uh, committee on anti-terrorism and money laundering has said that, you know, there's too much cash. We cannot do that. Why don't you use cryptocurrency? Of course, with KYC, then you can see where the money is going, to, right? In different wallets. So, you know, they're now on the grey list, but look at this, this is good. I like that the Europeans are doing this to Pakistan. Hopefully they will be able to open the market for us. Yeah. Need blacklisting. They're now on the grey list. So with this, Bitcoin regulation, guess what? Pakistan is a great market. You don't think it will explode? It will explode. Yeah. It will take time, but it will really, really go to a curve like this. And then the adoption will go like this. The good thing is, is in Pakistan, they are already used to the bank earning, to the solution being on the phone. So that's why I said the application for the unbanked is probably one of the biggest. Uh, it's going to be like 